For years now, the standard way of installing the Tasmoda open source firmware onto a device like a Sonoff or a Wemos D1 Mini for your home automation system has been to use the ESP tool command line utility maintained by my friend Angus. It's really powerful and does a lot of stuff, but it can be a little bit daunting. And it also leaves you with a bit of a problem because even after you've put the binary onto your device, you then have to do that little dance at the end where you power it up and then you use a device like your computer or your phone to change and connect to its Wi-Fi network and then you have to give it the configuration info for your own Wi-Fi network, have it switch back and then switch your phone back again. It's all a bit of a pain. But now there is a really awesome little GUI called Tasmatizer and it takes care of all of that for you. It makes it so much easier. Now Tasmatizer is not an over-the-air tool. That means you still need a physical connection to the device. If it's something like a Wemos D1 Mini, it's really easy. You've got USB, so all you need to do is plug in the USB cable, plug it into your computer, and you're ready to go. You can run Tasmatizer. But if you've got a device like a Sonoff, then you still need to make the connections to Power and TX and RX. I'm not going to go into details of that now. I've done an entire extended video on how to uh, flash any Sonoff device or any ESP8266 device, even if you don't know the pinout. So um, go and check that out if you need the details. What I'm going to do with this little Sonoff Basic, which I'm just going to use for demonstration purposes, is get this four-way header, and I'm going to solder it in on the little programming header in there. And then what we can do is either use jumper cables or um, because I'm lazy I designed this little device. It's a Sonoff programming adapter and um, what it does is provide the four pin header on this side that goes into the Sonoff and then a six pin header on this side that goes into a USB to serial converter like a 3.3 volt FTDI cable. And um, I have one right here which has got the adapter and the USB to serial converter all covered in heat shrink because I do this so often I just have one of these sitting here on my bench ready to go. Plug in USB, plug it into this on-off, and I'm sorted. So now I'm going to solder that little header in place so that this on-off is ready to be flashed. That didn't take long at all. Pull out that chunk of blue tack, stick it back there for next time, and now we're ready to go. On the Sonoff Basic, ground is at the top, and on my adapter, ground is at the top, and it all matches. So if we plug it in there, that is the connection we need. But before we're plugging it in and powering it up, we need to make sure we put the Sonoff into programming mode. With the Sonoff Basic, that's super easy. All you do is hold down the button while you are connecting power. So what I'm going to do is just press in this button, insert the programming adapter, let go, and the Sonoff is now powered up and it's in programming mode, ready to receive Tasmoda. So from now, we're just getting into software. Hardware is all taken care of. There's lots of information about Tasmatizer at github.com slash Tasmota slash Tasmatizer, including information about how to install it. If you've got Windows, you can just download the Windows XE and run that. You can also use pip to install it. What I'm going to do is use pip3 and install it on my Mac. So I'll just copy that command, switch over to a console, and pip install Tasmatizer. This will also take care of the dependencies, so everything is now ready to go. Because I just installed this as a regular user, it's installed it within a subdirectory. So on my Mac, it's inside library python 3.7 bin Tasmatizer. And all I have to do is run that and it will launch the Tasmatizer GUI. And now before I plug the Sonoff in, I'm going to have a look at the list of serial ports. Just click refresh here to make sure it's the latest and you can see a list of the ports that are currently available on the machine. That's devices that I already have plugged in. So now I'm going to hold down the button on here, plug it into my USB hub, wait a couple of seconds, let go of the button, and then we can refresh the list of ports. Now if we look in here, we can see that there is a longer list. That's because it's added these devices. CU.USB modem 14, etc. is the one I want. So I'll select that. And now at this point, we can decide what we want to upload. If we selected a binary file, for example, if you compiled Tasmoda yourself and created a binary, 
or you had something else you wanted to upload, you could select it here. But you can also select Release. And you can see here it gives us a big list of all of the different versions of Tasmoda which you can install. We just want Tasmoda bin in this case because that's the default. And there are a couple of options. So we can select Backup Original Firmware, which takes a copy of what's currently on the memory of the device. Uh, I'm not going to bother with that because once you go Tasmoda, you don't go back. And there's also an option for Erase Before Flashing. What that's about is making sure that the entire memory of the target device is clear. If you've had old software on there, uh, maybe an old version of Tasmoda, it can have things like settings stored in memory. By selecting Erase Before Flashing, what it does is overwrite the entire memory of the device before it installs the new software. That way you can be sure there's nothing left hanging around. It only adds a few seconds to the process, so just leave it turned on. It doesn't uh, do any harm. So now we can just click on Tasmatize. You can see that it's downloading the binary that I wanted, and it's erasing Flash. But you can also see in the background, if you look at the console, it's running ESP Tool. That's because Tasmatizer is really a fancy front end to ESP tool with some extra features added as well. So what you can do is get all the benefits of ESP tool without having to use the command line. Now it's writing the image, this takes a little bit, so we'll just let it run. Okay, that's done. And it's telling us that flashing is successful, so power cycle the device. I'll just say OK here, and now I'm going to go back to the device, I'll just unplug it, plug it back in again, so it's going to start up. And in fact you can see the LED is blinking, that's the, um, the standard Tasmoda behavior. So we now have Tasmoda on this device. And at this point you would normally have to do the Wi-Fi dance, where you connect to the device and reconfigure it. But this is where the real killer feature of Tasmatizer comes in. Because what we can do is configure it through the GUI using the USB connection. You don't have to do that Wi-Fi dance. We'll just refresh once again and we can see that we have the, um, the serial port here. I'll select it and I'll click on send config. And what it shows us are different configuration options that we can send to the device directly from Tasmatizer. Now if you just try to click into these you'll find that you can't edit them. What you have to do is enable the section. So I'll enable Wi-Fi and now I can give it the, uh, the name of my Wi-Fi network and I'll type in the password, but of course I don't want you to know this. It keeps it all nice and secret for me. You can also configure a recovery Wi-Fi if you want to, and you can also specify the type of module and the template. So what we can do is if we activate this section, we can say the module is generic, or we could pick any one of these devices. It's got all the standard on-off devices here. In this particular case, it's a Sonoff Basic, so I'm just going to select that. That way, all of the options related to the Sonoff Basic are going to be configured right out of the box. I won't have to do anything. We could also use template. If we select this, you can just paste a template string in here. Now, there are a huge number of templates available for different devices, and what they do is preload Tasmoda with the configuration to suit that device. So if you're working with the device that provides you a template, just paste it in there and you're all good to go. But I'm going to go back to module. I'll leave that as on off basic. I'm also going to turn on MQTT and I'm going to configure it with my MQTT broker. I just have the standard port. The topic I'm going to modify, I'm going to add a dash percent 06x on there. And what that will do is insert a unique ID based on the MAC address of the device, or the chip ID. And that will mean that all of the MQTT topics will be based on the ID of this specific device, and they'll be unique on my network. Here we can see the full topic is derived from the topic up here, and the prefix. So the prefix will have something like stat, or cmnd, or teller, and then slash, tasmoda, dash, and then some characters after that. I'm just going to leave the rest of it as it is. So now we can click save and this will send that configuration to the Sonoff and restart it. So we'll just click OK. And that's it. It's configured. So the device has now, well, it's now in the process of rebooting. It just went through its usual little flash routine. And that should now be connected to my home Wi-Fi. It'll be connected to my MQTT broker and it'll be available for control. 
I can also log into its web interface and configure it the traditional way. But for most purposes, that's all you need to do. We now have Tasmoda installed on this device and configured, and we haven't had to call ESP tool directly. We haven't had to connect to its Wi-Fi. The configuration is all just done through the GUI. So Tasmatizer is a really awesome tool. I really highly encourage you to give it a try, and it makes setting up Tasmoda on devices like this really easy. Now, go and make something cool.